So today we're going to be looking at manufacturing and more specifically using Airtable for your manufacturing process. We're going to be looking at solving some of the most challenging parts about manufacturing process so we're using a little bit of automation and a little bit of AI. Let's take a look. All right, so we're going to start things off with a very quick demo of the system. Now, the general idea is that we are running a shoe manufacturing business and this Airtable setup will help us organize the tasks that require us to go from idea to manufacturing a certain type of product. Now, the most interesting thing about this whole thing is that we have our blueprint details set up over here and essentially what a blueprint is if you're not super familiar with the term is that we have a blueprint for a product like a low top shoe right and for that specific type of product we have specific tasks so in other words at the kickoff date we offset the date by zero so in other words when you decide to start the project the kickoff task is there then the next task is called send designs to supplier for prototypes it takes 14 days from kickoff, the task that this task depends on. So this task is 14 days from kickoff. Then this task, prototypes ready and shipped, usually takes 45 days from the day that we uh, send the design to the supplier. But there is an interesting thing, especially tasks that depend on suppliers and especially suppliers that are in the Far East or something like that, we want to make sure that we mark them because we want the system using AI to evaluate the start and end date against potential holidays in uh, that country's calendar. So, yeah, it's almost like having a human kind of like double checking that country's calendar and adjusting things. Not only that, our suppliers also have different amounts of days based on the shipping method that we choose with them. So if we decide that the project is going to be shipped by vessel, if it's it's, a, it's my Chinese supplier, that means that not only will it take 45 days to manufacture something or like manufacture the prototypes, it's going to take 30 days to ship them. And we need to also account for holidays. So without any further ado, uh, let's let's actually trigger this. And the task should now start to uh, populate over here. So here we go. Uh, the system is now just going to wait a little bit because it's thinking, it's evaluating. And I know that between the dates over here for the prototypes, there should be a bit of a longer delay. There you go. 82 days. And the most interesting thing is that you also have notes. So here we go. The task begins on the original start date as it does not coincide with any Chinese national holidays. During the task period, the Chinese New Year necessitates an extension of the task by an additional seven days. Consequently, the due date is extended by the shipping time resulting in the, in the adjusted due date. Same thing happens with manufacturing. So essentially, this system now evaluates every single manufacturer task and adjusts accordingly. Now, the other interesting thing that this whole thing does is that you can change the dates. In other words, let's say my kickoff uh, was a little bit delayed and the end date is not the second let's say it was actually the sixth i don't know if you noticed but all of these dates moved now you might also argue the fact that alex this should actually evaluate the dates and yes it should but the most important thing here to showcase is that you can use ai to evaluate the start date end date of a given task and adjust and explain why it's adjusting so that you have full confidence in the fact that you know my timeline is actually accurate now let's take a look at how the database works behind the scenes now before we go any further i would like to say that we appreciate absolutely every single person who watches this channel and we're trying to reach a goal of 3,000 subscribers by the end of this year 2024 now i kind of know what you're thinking 3,000 subscribers that's a lame target uh, but we're a small channel so i'm willing to up the ante here for 10,000 subscribers i'm thinking i'm gonna let go of my most precious possession and that is my beard so yes sometimes we have to kill our darlings for the greater good although i know i am going to severely regret this anyway back to the video all right so the database couldn't be more straightforward we have a table called projects 
And this is where I basically set up my projects and get my uh, linked activities calendar against set project. So this is where basically I set up my master blueprint. In other words, I basically tell the system at this point, this is the blueprint that I want you to use. This is a supplier. This is the official start date of the project. My uh, default transport generate the activities. That's our uh, automation trigger and our link, of course, to the uh, to the activities calendar. Activities calendar. Again, super straightforward. We have uh, our name, which is just like a concatenated version of a bunch of fields. Uh, we have our link back to the project. We have our task description. We have our, our vendor dependent task, which again, I wanted to make sure that it's labeled accurately in our activities calendar so that whoever the user is, they know that, look, this task is a little bit special because it doesn't depend on us. It's, uh, it's dependent on the vendor. Notes. Again, very straightforward uh, field, estimated uh, start, estimated end, duration, and dependent on. So this is an interesting one because technically all these four fields are related to each other. And you can go into the settings of this by going to the field dependencies, right? Settings. So let's go configure. And this is how I've set this up. Basically, the rescheduling logic is fixed. So that's essentially as soon as one thing moves, everything moves. That's basically it. They are basic fields. This is dates, duration, and just a link back to, to itself with this dependent on field. This is essentially linking back to the same table. Now, uh, suppliers, again, super straightforward, just a name, supplier location, days to protos, and a link back to projects. Blueprint master, again, very straightforward, nothing here. Um, yeah, that, that's like super crazy. We have our name, the record ID field, just a formula that brings the record ID, a drop down, low top, high top for sizing of the shoes. We have our TNA uh, blueprint details, and then we also have projects. So TNA blueprint details, that basically brings us to blueprint details. So it's the related blueprint tasks for that particular uh, blueprint. We have our basic name, related blueprint master, the task name, the days offset, depends on this is again linking back to itself like so we have a lookup for a uh, blueprint detail task name we also have a lookup of the record id so we're basically looking up from this field from this basically looking up itself itself i guess right and we're just bringing the name and the record id and there's also a checkbox over here that says influenced by vendor because this is going to be useful later on when we're dealing with the automation that's it now, let's go ahead and take a look at how everything is set up in terms of make.com. Right, it's time to get started with our automation. And yeah, as you can see, it's fairly straightforward. I'm using make.com. If you're not familiar, welcome to make. It's an awesome system to automate tasks and really a ton of different things. There's a link in the description down below for uh, a free trial of like 30 day trial of a pro account go ahead and check that out and it's also going to help the channel this is very typical of what we usually do <laughs> uh, we start things off as per usual with a webhook the webhook basically gets triggered by Airtable. so this is how my uh, trigger works um, when a record matches conditions and you have to obviously jump into automations so if you're following along jump into automations generate activities inside of the project table and then run script. Now the script has also remained the same largely. The one thing that you need to change in this script is this uh, webhook that you can fetch from make. So in make, create a new scenario, add a webhook as your uh, trigger and copy this address. Now don't copy mine, copy the one that make generates for you. So copy address to clipboard, replace this one with yours make sure that you don't eliminate anything. Um, also, input variables, don't forget to add record ID and also map the Airtable record ID by pressing this blue button and choosing this Airtable record ID value. Uh, once you're done, just press finish editing. Uh, don't forget to turn the automation on. Uh, so many fails <laughs> with that. And yeah, that's basically it. You're set up with your trigger. Now, let's take a look at the rest of the scenario. So we first 
need to get our project very straightforward that's where we're actually triggering the scenario right so we need to get the project same thing another get get the supplier by mapping the supplier from the project then we need to get the blueprint master uh, again, that's the applied blueprint uh, from the project. We want to fetch the blueprint details, and this is where things start to get more interesting. We want to fetch the blueprint details that match that blueprint master. In our blueprint details, there is a blueprint master. Uh, there we go. So this lookup field that I forgot to mention, it's the record ID of the blueprint master. So we want to fetch the blueprint details that relate to that blueprint master that we just triggered on right so that's basically how we set that up no limit because you can have like tons of tasks i'm sure now what we need to do in this case we need to actually aggregate all of these results into a text because later on in the next module after this one we'll need to uh, use ai to arrange to sort those tasks accordingly only doing this because you can't really sort this maybe you can but it will require somebody to actually jump in and say oh this is the first task this is the second task this is and it just doesn't sit well that's not really how business works you want to really say that this task dep depends on that one and so forth not by saying oh this comes first this comes second it's a little bit not intuitive, at least from my experience. So I'm using AI to actually sort uh, this uh, text aggregator. This is how I've set it up. Uh, I have my task name, ID is dependence and so forth. I'm using AI to basically sort that list out. And this is what my prompt looks like. I'm using, by the way, 01 mini. And yeah, this is what the prompt looks like. Feel free to pause the video and copy this if you want. Max tokens, 50,000, doesn't really matter. Uh, temperature, you can't really adjust it on the O1 mini. Uh, and that's it. This is the cheap thinking model that uh, OpenAI has. Uh, and then finally, we actually iterate through the result. The result looks something like this, where we have the task name, task ID, dependency, yada, yada, yada. And the next step is, of course, to iterate through the result and split it based on the new line. Very straightforward. Then we actually get the blueprint detail, like so, from this sorting, because it's going to be sending those results one by one. We first create the activity, actually, just by, just by saying what the task description is and linking it back to the project. Nothing else. I'm really keeping it very straightforward because the estimated start and end date, that needs some thought. <laughs> so from there, we have a router and there's like two uh, paths here. Dependency, yes. Dependency, no. In the case that there is dependency, no. So a task does not have a dependency, which I've set up like this, but technically you can probably just say from here, blueprint detail, there is no dependencies, or if it's like blank, just no, right? Then I'm just updating that independent task record that I just created over here in six, mapping the ID and start date, official start date, add the offset, and the same thing for the end date. That's basically it. Nothing else. Now, here we have our final, what is it? Five little modules. Dependency, yes, there is a dependency in um, in the task. And what I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to get the dependency task from before. What was that uh, task that we depend on before we actually add the, uh, the start end date of this task that we've just created over in six? So I'm actually getting the dependent on uh, like so. Then I'm actually searching inside of my activities calendar for the name of that task. Maybe actually, actually I should add the project ID here as an extra thing for the formula because you might have multiple projects uh, and you actually want to get that project's dependency task like so. Limiting it to one, very straightforward. Um, yeah, that should yield some results. And we have basically two camps here. First of all, I want to make sure that there are bundles. That's the first filter that we put in here. Uh, I want to get some results. If there is no results, I want the whole thing to just stop here. From there, we have two paths. The first path is 
influenced by vendor does not exist. In other words, if this task is not influenced by the vendor, then move forward. And what does it do? It basically adds the correct start end times, super straightforward, very, very easy, right? Now, from there, if the task is vendor dependent, we actually need to use that special little AI robot checker thing. And this is how I've set it up. Again, I'm using the same model. This is my prompt. And yeah, it needs a little bit of adjustment. And I guess if you're using the other model, the normal O1 model, you don't probably don't need to put so much in the prompt, but O1 mini is much cheaper and it seems to work okay uh, for the most part. From there, this spits out the uh, result in this sort of way where we have adjusted start date, adjusted due date, and then reasoning, like why. From there, we just do the same thing as we did over here in 12, but with a few twists, we just basically add the adjusted start date, like so. Uh, we also give the result, in other words, the reasoning part, and we put all of that in the notes. Estimated start date, estimated end date. Um, we're also parsing that date because it's text and we actually need a date field. Don't forget the dependent on, so dependent on needs to be uh, added in there. I think I'm also adding it in here and I forgot to mention it. Let me see. Yes, I do. Uh, and that's basically it in terms of the automation. Can it be better? Yes, of course it can be better. Uh, there's tons of ways that you can perfect this, but it's a great, great start that already will solve a lot of problems for a lot of people who are uh, struggling with uh, very complicated uh, scenarios. So yeah, that's it in terms of the automation. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching this particular video on manufacturing automation using Airtable. Let me know down in the comments below if you want me to expand on the topic at all and what parts of this you found helpful or not so helpful. And yeah, until the next one. Cheers.